elements and and mm-hmm. kind of split that into two parts. So the first part is, um, can you, if you want to kind of boost your ketones, can you take exogenous ketones? And does that help? I mean, if you still have glucose going around in your blood, what happens? Can you burn both together? Yeah, I mean, you're always going to have glucose in your blood because you need it. Um, you know, there are certain cells that require it, um, uh, brain cells, red blood cells, and so on. Um, but the amount of uh, glucose that's actually circulating in your blood, you know, you have about five liters of blood in your body. So picture that. And, and in that, there's about a teaspoon of sugar. That's all there is, of glucose. Mm. Um, so it's not a lot at any point in time. Of course, you're using it all the time and you're replacing it from glycogen stores and, and in your diet. Um, uh so that's the that's the um, uh, the the general uh, amount you need. So the amount of ketones you need is again about a one to one ratio. And it's a much smaller molecule. It's more like it's something like a fat molecule. Um, but uh, you can you know you don't need a lot of ketone to to mm-hmm. make up for that glucose because there's not a lot of glucose there in the first place. Um, so can you provide that uh, exogenously? Um, so in other words, by eating ketones. Um, you can, the best way to do that is with ketone esters. Um, um, the esterized form, uh, it's a challenge to make it. I mean, the people that do this are, are you know, like uh, cycling athletes and so on, because they might, they might have exogenous ketones in their water bottle. Because mo- by the way, most endurance athletes now at the highest levels are keto adapted. So mm-hmm. because they, they realize that they lose that excess body fat. And, and if you're riding up, you know, one of the one of the mountains in the Tour de France, you know, a pound on your bike or a pound on your body is the same pound you have to carry up that hill. Uh, so being very, very lean is important. So they've found that ketogenic diets not only do that, but, but because the ketones burn with less oxygen, they can actually produce the same output with, with, with less uh, oxygen. So it's, it's a beneficial, which is you know, all, all, all the leaders in, in those endurance things are now keto adapted, uh, all the ones that are winning anyway. Um, so, so, so the ketones can provide an alternative fuel source, both for muscles and for the brain. We can, we can talk about that a little bit later, um, but it's better to make your own. You can add it. Um, one study they've done, uh, my, um, a colleague of mine, my friend, Stephen Kunain at the uh, University of Sherbrooke is doing studies looking at exogenous ketones and Alzheimer's. So people with mild cognitive impairment and then Alzheimer's just using exogenous ketones, no keto adaptation, no other changes to diet finding uh, quite dramatic improvements in cognitive function for people with Alzheimer's. And this is two tablespoons of, of um, uh, MCT oil, which is medium chain triglyceride. That's kind of a, it's sort of a coconut oil derivative uh, that converts really a hundred percent if it's the right kind. Uh, if it's the pure form will convert about a hundred percent into ketones in the blood. Um, what I use that exogenous ketones for is easing people into a ketogenic diet because most people haven't experienced higher levels of ketone in their blood. So before, in the early process of adapting, I get them to use this MCT oil. Um, and you can add it safely. I mean, some people, just a bit of warning, um, initially they can have some, uh, we'll call it digestive urgencies <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. immediately after. So just be aware of that. You know, if you're, if you're gonna be sitting on a bus for two hours, don't start experimenting with MCT oil just before you get on the bus. <laughs> right. um, uh, I, I don't, most people don't, but some people do. Um, now there are the, the, the esters, there's, there's two isomeric forms. There's the L and the D form, and, and it's really just the D form that you want to have. Uh, so again, it's very, very expensive. You know, it can be like $3,000 for a bottle of, of the stuff. And it's really just used experimentally. Um, there's actually a lab in, in Oxford that produces most of it for research purposes. So the other one are, the other one are ketone salts. So you see lots of these products with ketone salts in them. Yeah, it gives you a little bit. It's not, it, you're better off just using MCT oil. Um, mm-hmm. You know, kind of Dave Asprey's kind of bullet bulletproof stuff. Uh, uh, his, I've actually talked to Dave, his, his um, uh, I think it's called Brain Octane is, is the pure, uh, the pure um, uh, MCT oil that you want to have that produce, that converts 100% into ketones. So, you know, it's a good, if, you, if you're interested, it's a good way to start. It's a good, good thing to have around uh, to see how your body's going to react to it. Um, but what you might find is, um, uh, because it, it is, it just goes down with concentration brain, right into the brain. Uh, you might find after you take it, you, you have like this sudden, often sudden, uh, kind of awareness that your brain just sort of feels like it's clearing a little bit and your brain feels a little bit sharper. And, you know, you finish that crossword a little bit quicker or <laughs> whatever game mm. you're playing. Um, and actually they've, they've, they've been using, um, 
exogenous ketones even on like trading floors and stock markets and in law in law firms when they're going into court and so on just to raise that little bit of sharpness a bit they've, they've even been experimenting with uh, it uh, with with war fighters uh, navy seals and so on are all keto adapted now and, and they use exogenous ketones uh to heighten their awareness and to offset the need for sleep because they're often you know if they're in a dangerous situation there's often times where they can't sleep for days so um pretty exciting stuff it's all very interesting but yeah so it's, it's, you know, you're better off being keto adapted, but you can certainly play around with it. And the best way to do that is to get a good quality uh, MCT oil and, and, and start with a, start with maybe a teaspoon and see what that does to you. And you can look up to about uh, two tablespoons a day, which is about 30 mils. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds good. I, have, I mean, I have tried yeah, kind of bulletproof coffee before. Mm. It's quite good, but what um, you should do is put full fat cream in your coffee, right? You know, like whipping cream. Um, okay. earlier I was doing a, a, another, um, podcast with a group, uh, uh, it's a carnivore group in California <clears throat> and I had my, they said, what are you drinking? I had my tea, but I, I put, it sounds awful, especially, you know, I lived in England too. And I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of English still in Hong Kong, but, um, uh, but you know, put cream in tea would seem to be, you know, mm-hmm. un- unheard of try it and you'll never, you'll never do it again. Because the other thing that's weird about full fat cream is it kind of tastes sweet, even though there's no sugar in it, it just kind mm. of tricks your taste buds. Um, but uh, give that a try. You'll never go back. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I will definitely think about that. Um, so I, we're kind of going up, but supplements. So the other part of supplements is, is there any, um, so you're removing a lot of things from your diet, right? So is there uh, actually any- you're not all, all you're really removing is glucose. Because uh, yeah. starch is glucose in uh, mm-hmm. a, a, a you know large branch chain form, um, so so carbohydrate really comes in two forms: sugar. Well, actually three. There's sugar, uh, and you know monosaccharides, disaccharides. There's sugars. Table sugar is glucose and fructose. Um, there's there's starches, mm-hmm. and the animal version of that is glycogen, which are which are complexes but still glucose. And then there's fiber, insoluble and soluble fiber. Uh, and, and so the soluble and insoluble fiber is fine. It doesn't raise your blood sugar. Uh, all of this is really about regulating insulin levels in your blood, which is the key thing. Um, so, uh, the fiber is fine. You can actually get fiber, you know, you can psyllium husk or, you know, oat bran or that, that has little or no carbohydrate other than the fiber. So it's really the, um, uh, non-fiber carbohydrate you're getting rid of. Now it comes in various forms, you know, potatoes and rice and, and, you know, wheat forms like pasta and bread and all that sort of thing. But you're really, and that's why, that's why, you know, I sort of, when people say, well, you can't get balanced nutrition, I say, all you're taking out is, is blood sugar and your body can make that from non-sugar sources. It's a process called gluconeogenesis, uh, which means making new glucose and you can make it from amino acids. So, you, so in those macronutrients we were talking about earlier, there are essential uh, proteins or essential amino acids. So if you don't eat them, you're going to die. There are essential fatty acids that you need to consume. You can't produce them yourself. You need to consume them. Uh, there are no essential carbohydrates. You don't need carbohydrate at all in your diet, right. uh, which is interesting for some people. So, so when you say, I, sorry, I jumped in there, but when you say nope. you're taking all kinds of things out of your diet, you're taking all kinds of things we eat, Mm-hmm. But you're actually, in terms of nutrition, you're really just taking excess glucose out of your diet that you don't need. Right. Okay. So, so is there anything, when you go on a keto diet, is there any kind of like um, supplements or, or small, I'm trying to think of the right term, like vitamins or something that you would need to supplement with like salt um, or- Salt for sure. So that's the main, I'm glad you mentioned that one. Uh, And the reason for that is, um, you know, more than if we're just talking about sodium, you know, sodium chloride, salt, table salt, um, about half of that sodium um, comes from uh, processed foods. Mm. And in particular, bread, bread is a big source of processed uh, of sodium, in in, which is a processed food in bread. Um, So because you're not eating that you you actually have to add add more salt and, and there, you, you, people that are listening might have heard of the keto flu. It's kind of, you know, some dizziness, lightheadedness, crankiness, um, flu-like symptoms, you know, sometimes some digestive issues and a bit of nausea. Most of that is, is, is poor salt consumption. So um, one of the things we encourage people to do uh, in, in, as you're adapting to a ketogenic diet is to increase your salt intake. And, and sometimes even like some salty broth is good. Um, and, and that will tend to alleviate. And the reason for that, Richard, is that um, again, it's about insulin. So uh, I think most of your listeners know when you, when you, uh, insulin takes sugar out of your blood into the cells, 
so when you eat a lot of carbohydrate, you're raising your blood sugar levels. And so you have to release a lot of insulin uh, in order to absorb all that. And, and most of the excess stuff will be absorbed and turned into fat, which is why it's, it's carbohydrate that makes you fat, not fat. Um, so you need, you need, to, uh, you need to, uh, to, 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 to moderate that. Now, the uh, insulin does another thing, which is it, it causes the reabsorption of sodium uh, from the urine. In, in the kidneys. So you, you take sodium out and then it's reabsorbed, that means back into the blood. Now, the insulin has a very powerful effect there. So when you're, take, when you're eating a lot of carbohydrate, you're secreting a lot of insulin all the time. We call it hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin in the blood, which means you're reabsorbing too much salt. And when you reabsorb salt, if you remember your high school chemistry, the water will go with it. And, and that increases your blood volume, which also increases your blood pressure. So if you do the reverse, you stop eating that carbohydrate, your insulin levels drop, you start removing salt from your body and the water that goes with it. And that can quite precipitously drop your uh, blood pressure to the point where you get dizzy or lightheaded. So that's why it's important to see your physician, always see your physician before you make uh, this kind of dietary choice. There's a significant metabolic change. And if you're taking antihypertensive drugs, um, you know, even hydrochlorothiazide or something that's a diuretic, you, you need to have a concomitant reduction of those medications also for, for blood sugar in particular. Um, so that's why I say ketogenic diets there, they're very safe if done well, but you do need to discuss this with your physician. There are, there are some, there are a few, uh, very, very rare uh, um, uh, genetic disorders that are involved with uh, keto metabolism and carnitine metabolism that would, that would be a contraindication for ketogenic diet, but that's sort of one in a million kind of thing. Um, but if you're taking medication for antihypertensive drug, for, for hypertension or for high blood sugar, uh, then you should for sure consult with your physician before you embark on this because you'll need to reduce that uh, medication. I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.